Before this week, I absolutely had no idea what vibe coding meant. The term kept showing up on my feed and I was like, am I missing something here? So did some digging into it. And what I found out was pretty wild. Basically vibe coding is where you just let the AI do the heavy lifting and you essentially surrender control to the AI gods and crossing your fingers that the algorithm RNG blesses you with working code. I can't believe that's a thing. You write up a prompt, give it to the AI agent. In the hopes that you've given it enough context to spit out something useful. Sometimes you hit the jackpot and other times, well, let's just say the results can be interesting. For the past week, I completely ditched VS Code in favor of Cursor. And honestly, I was pretty shocked by what I discovered. Let me just say straight up, Cursor's AI implementation blows VS Code out of the water. Not that it's like super revolutionary. It's just that each feature that they have is so much more thoughtful for example, the tab feature. I will go in deeper detail on this later in the video, but basically they have a bunch of AI features that's just tagged on to this one tab key. Even though it's so subtle, when you press it so many times, it really does add up. Throughout this video, I'll walk you through my week of essentially letting Cursor AI take the wheel. I'll show you where vibe coding could potentially completely transform your workflow, but also be real in situations where you might want to just code yourself the old fashioned way. Switching to Cursor was actually super seamless since basically it's a fork of VS Code. When I first opened it up, it immediately pulled all my VS Code settings. I didn't need to reconfigure anything. The interface, shortcuts, everything looked exactly identical. If I didn't pay any attention, I would have thought it was still VS Code. But then I noticed something new. While the chat panel looked very similar, it had a context dropdown, which allowed for additional context like adding web search or even links to documentation. What blew me away about this AI agent is that it actually understands your entire code base, like the whole thing. When you ask it to do something, it already has the context of all your files and code structure. VS Code just doesn't have anything like this currently. And it gets better. This thing can create new files, delete old ones, and even modified files that you didn't even specifically tell it to look at. Oh, and the agent is also able to execute command lines in its inline terminal. So I decided, to test this thing out. Here, I wanted the agent to create a page that looks like the mockup that I made on Figma. A very simple page that allows users to drop or browse the files. As you can see, it's kind of unpredictable in a sense that it kind of gets me to maybe 90%, but there's a bunch of weirdness that's introduced. At least in this case, it created the page and reused components that already existed in the project. However, it looks like the background is completely off and the open button doesn't do anything. At this point, I mean, is it easier to code it myself since it's so simple rather than asking the agent to spit out more code that may be way more verbose than it needs to be? After that experience, I was kind of burnt. I decided to be more specific about what I want the agent to do. Rather than having it implement a whole feature, I tried something smaller like refactoring part of code base or adding targeted parts of a bigger feature. So in my second attempt, I tried having the agent refactor code for me. Basically, I have states in my Electron main process that I am managing manually, and I like to make them all into a Zustand store. This time, the agent did a little better job, maybe, but still, it got me to 90%. It didn't understand that I wanted to replace my previous state measurement solution, so it just created a duplicate of what I had using Sustand without hooking it up. Perhaps that is my bad because I didn't give it explicit instructions to do that. This is where I would probably require more practice on exactly how much context I need to put into my prompt for the agent to be able to understand my intentions. You know what's funny? The feature I ended up loving the most in Cursor is something I wasn't even looking for. 
the tab key functionality. It sounds so basic, right? But it's quietly becoming my favorite part of the whole experience. It's one of those things that you don't know how good it is until you actually use it. I'll be coding along and tab does exactly what I want it to do without me having to even think about it. Sometimes it's completing code, other times it's accepting AI suggestions or letting me edit multiple lines all at once. It just gets me. It like reads my mind. I'll hit tab and just boom. It jumps to the exact spot where I was planning to move my cursor to. After a few days, the editor just felt like it was part of me. I think vibe coding is definitely part of where programming is headed, but it's not quite there yet. That said, there are some solid reasons why you should give it a shot. First off, playing with these AI agents help you get a feel for their boundaries what they can achieve versus when you actually need to roll up your sleeve and code it yourself. Here's the thing I really need to emphasize. You actually need to know how to code to use these AI features. Actually understand what you're doing. I just can't imagine being a complete beginner and just throwing prompts at the wall, hoping something will stick. Just getting an error and thinking, oh, I'll just re-roll and hope the AI will fix it. Let me be straight with you. There are situations where vibe coding is just asking for trouble. First off, if you're a beginner and trying to learn to code, stay away from these AI agents. It's like trying to learn how to drive by sitting in a self-driving car. You're not actually developing those skills, even though it feels like you're going places. Another scenario, building anything production ready. Just thinking about it gives me a headache. These AI agents love to spit out code. They can spit out code all day, all night, and before you know it, your code base has grown to this massive hairy thing that you can barely understand. Good luck figuring out what the heck is going on in there. And let's talk about the just one more role mentality. If you find yourself repeatedly asking an AI to generate fixes or complete features hoping that it will magically work on the next try, stop. It's time to actually code it yourself. So after a full week of going all in on Cursor and its AI features, would I stick with it? Well, it's kind of complicated. For Cursor itself, absolutely. The tab functionality alone is worth the price. It's made my day-to-day -day coding noticeably smoother and I'm definitely keeping that in my workflow. But when it comes to the full-on vibe coding with AI agent, I'm still on the fence about that one. I keep seeing wild claims online about people becoming like 10x or even 100x more productive with these agents. And honestly, I have questions like what kind of coding are they doing? What? Are they prompting? Are they prompting wizards or something? <laughs> Something's not adding up here. For me personally, I probably would say it's a 1.5 productivity boost at best. And a big part of that is trust. I don't feel comfortable letting AI run wild through my whole code base yet. The time I spent reviewing what it writes and fixing subtle bugs it introduces eats into those productivity gains pretty quickly. I'm really curious what you all think about this topic. Drop your experiences down below in the comments and let me know if you're part of the code vibing team or are you totally against it. And hey, if you found this helpful, smash that like button, consider subscribing. It genuinely helps me out a ton and it lets me know to make more videos like this. All right, peace.